You don't know you have a cholesterol problem until you know these five numbers right here. I get this question all the time. Welcome back to the doctor's office. Let's do a little consultation. My cholesterol's high, doc. What do I do? Doc wants to put me on statins. I don't want anything to do with statins. I don't blame you on that. Over 900 adverse uh, studies done. Just 900 studies proving the side effects of those things and how they strip your muscles and strip your body of CoQ10 and can create a lot of side effects. Way worse than the cholesterol problem. And let's just back the train up. You got to know these five numbers here. And if you do know them, then you can make a wise choice on do you even actually have a cholesterol problem in the first place? So cholesterol sufferers, someone that you know dealing with this, they need to see this video. So please share this thing. Now, this is not to say just quit your statin drugs. This is not to say go against your doctor's advice. Work with your doctor. But if I can make you a better consumer, you can go in there a little more loaded. You can go in demanding a few tests. And if they refuse, find a new doctor. You can fire us, you know. That's a thing. A little more integrity into the system. So let's dive right into it here. Five numbers you got to know. You get your total cholesterol. Doesn't really mean much unless the thing's over 300. Okay, okay, I know the diagnosis and what they're going off of. Talk to your doctor with it. But there's not that big of a risk of having lots of cholesterol. Your body produces 75% of it. It's not producing a white waxy thing, uh, yellow waxy thing to kill you. It's, that's not what it's designed to do. Actually, you need cholesterol. It's around every single cell inside your body. Your brain is made up of a bunch of it. And every time you damage yourself, AKA a scar, the waxy tissue that heals the scar, that's cholesterol. So you need it flowing through your body. There's no such thing as good or bad cholesterol. I know we refer to them as HDL and LDL gets the negative tone with it, but they're dump trucks. One of them's carrying raw, fresh material to the area to heal it. That's HDL. The LDLs picking up all the scraps and the garbage or the rubbish and rubble and bringing it back to the dump yard. So that's not as pleasant of a dump truck, right? And the longer those dump trucks stay on the road, the worse things can get. Let's dive in a little bit further. All right, so here we go. HDL, super important, carrying new raw materials so your body can heal. You need 25% of your total cholesterol to be HDL. That's a simple number, huh? So we want HDL divided by total cholesterol to equal ideally 25%, 0.25, okay? Is what you're looking for there. So if you got 50 HDLs, 200 total cholesterols, you're good. I can't help you do the math. You're gonna have to get a calculator out for it. Check your phone, Bubba. All right, number two, triglycerides. Big reflection of what's going on in your liver, by the way, if you're overeating sugar, triglycerides are gonna go up. If triglycerides are up, that's the first number I would look at. Then C.4 and 5 to get some more help here in just a moment. But if triglycerides are up, how do you know if they're too high? Take your triglyceride number divided by the HDL. If trigs are up, you need the good semis to keep it in check, keep the raw material in check. So trigs divided by HDL should be at 2. We're looking for that to be at 2. So if it is 100 for the trigs, 50 for the HDL, we're good. If it's 100 for the trigs, uh, 75 for the HDL, even better because now we are less than two. So two's the max and then below. And if you're below it, you're good. So that's how you know. If there's a problem there, you gotta fix your triglycerides, okay? If there's a problem with number one, you gotta fix your HDLs. You catch an on, so all the focus gets put on total cholesterol. We haven't even talked that, about that hardly yet. Number three, this is the biggie, okay? LDL, people freak out over it. I'm at 125, I'm at 130, I'm at 140. If you lived 15 years ago, that would have been normal. They keep lowering that dang number on you, why? Big Pharma can provide more drugs. Number one, medications in the world, heart drugs, specifically statins, blood pressure. They make up six of the top 10 medications are heart-related, blood pressure-related medications. They know this, they're exploiting it, in my opinion, but this number right here is the one that some doctors don't even know about. Your doctor may not, you need to find one that will. The particle size, you see all of these LDLs are not made the same. Some of them are real big. So if you got real big LDL particles, you are playing tennis with a tennis ball. And when it hits the net, what does the tennis ball do? Stops. If you play tennis, with a golf ball. What happens when the golf ball hits the net? It goes right through it. 
So small LDL particles can go through and clog up the arteries. Big ones bounce off the side like a net and keep on traveling and do what they're supposed to do. Snowballs that roll down the mountain, right, build up. So how do you get from this to this? Well, the longer the ball stays in the system, it wears down to this, that's like a tire wearing out. So the longer the semi drives, it's exposed to the elements. This is called oxidation. And when this thing gets oxidized, it turns into this. What does that? Free radicals. This is why antioxidants need to be into your system. They make good LDLs, which are not the problem. Your body's producing these. It's not producing something to kill you, remember? It turns them into the small ones. Those are the dangerous ones. So you measure your LDL particle size. If you have an LDL problem, you got to find out. Do I got a bunch of big ones, a bunch of big balls, or do I have a bunch of smaller ones? That's what we got to find out. If you got a bunch of larger ones, there's not a big risk at all. If you have a bunch of smaller ones, then you could be in trouble. Then I would go one step further and a lot of research shows if you would just measure your CRP levels, you can really get a good understanding of how much inflammation is going on in your system. So if you do have held LDL high, next step is to test the particle size and request that. If it contains a lot of the small ones, check that CRP to see how much inflammation is going on in your body. That is a protein that is broken down when the heart is inflamed. That's a better predictor of overall death risk or heart attack risk than LDL by itself. Whew, this is a share. How do you solve this type of stuff? I got a training down below that breaks down the causes and the solutions of natural things you can put in to move your cholesterol and to start making an impact. You should check that out. Let's keep going. We got two more numbers. Number four, fasting insulin level. Blood sugar? Yes. Your insulin. This is responsible for storing the glucose inside of your system. Why does this matter? Well, the more of this you have building up in your liver, which produces your triglycerides, the more we're gonna get bogged down and those numbers are gonna go higher and higher and higher. And your liver plays a large role in rolling these over so that if you do have small LDLs, it turns them back into fresh new big LDLs. You turn over the cholesterol that's produced inside of your body, your liver's doing that. This is a great reflection of how are you processing energy? How is your liver processing energy? You wanna see that number between two and six. Fasting insulin goes hand in hand with fasting blood sugar, the fasting BS, <laughs> fasting blood sugar. You want it below 79, ideally. I'll take it and you can accept it up to 100, but you're shooting for below 79. That means you're gonna have to implement some fasting. Check out my channel for more videos on rotational fasting. It's the fastest way to clear your liver out, drive this thing down and drive these numbers down. What do we do with this though? How do we impact HDL and raise it? How do you take triglycerides and lower them quickly? How do you lower your LDLs with natural substances that aren't like statins that cause a lot of side effects? Because even red yeast rice causes side effects. So I stopped using it several years ago. And below, I put a whole training for you to break down what do I need to be doing in order to get my cholesterol lower? And I created a cholesterol supporting supplement to go along with it that is not using red yeast rice. It's using other ingredients like plant sterols that can help lower the LDLs. Check out that video. I put it right here for you and there's a training attached down below in the comments. You gotta know these numbers. They're crucial to your cholesterol. Don't freak out, get educated, make health simple.